Hello everyone. Hello. I'm Andrea and this is my guest today, Johan. <laughs> Thank you very much for being with us because we know that uh, we had to postpone because I got sick. So I'm happy that I can be here today. Oh, even though, be as well. Thank yeah, you for welcome. And you know, because it doesn't matter that it's Tuesday, so Sunday is fine, but Tuesday is fine as well, right? <laughs> so we have Johan here. Do I read it right, Johan? Johan, yeah. Yeah, we read as Czech, read it. It's yeah. Nice. And he was born in Östersund. I was <laughs> trying to learn this. And that's, that's in Sweden. Yeah. And he's been living in the Czech Republic for the last six years. And he founded a company that we, uh, me and my team, we love very much. It's a good glass, so we'll talk more about it. Um, because part of his mission in this world is uh, to contribute to a viable planet. And the good glass is a bottle that fits every purpose. So, you know, we can then talk about it if you don't know it yet. And I'm very happy that he is here. He is working in Brno. So we'll get to know much more from now. So welcome again. Thank you. So tell me, <laughs> question as always, yeah. Uh, how did it happen that you came to Czech, to the Czech Republic or Brno particularly? I had a I had a strong urge to leave Sweden and I wanted to do and see something else. And I, uh, my my grandfather has a Czech wife and they've been oh. living outside of Brno for since I was a kid. So I I've been there quite a few times before. So I knew that Brno was a nice city. So. I, he's always been a big role model for me because he's done his own thing his whole life and been an entrepreneur and so, which I have, but that's been my, my ambition as well, so. wow. because of him. So I felt I wanted to move here before he retired. Wow. Okay. But he's living now in Sweden. Yeah, now he's living uh, in Sweden. For how long uh, did he live here? Oh, that's a good question. 25 years? Wow. So he speaks 20. Czech? Does he? Uh, I think <laughs> I speak much. <laughs> well, 25 years <laughs> would be nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice. And what was he doing as an entrepreneur? What kind of business? They have a business outside of Berno to, that produces glazings for balconies. And so if you have a balcony and you want glass around it. And... Oh, okay. Wow. Well, so glass again. Yeah, it's uh, glasses goes in the family. You can easily say my father works with something similar. So, really? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> but you took it completely in a new way. Yeah, yeah like, well, it's a good material. I always like glass. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> and when you came here, uh, you probably knew some information from your grandfather, but did you experience some culture shock? Yeah, on uh, on both sides. Partly I had this misconception that, that it would be... Um, I don't know, I thought I would get robbed or something, you know, I thought it would, really? be, I thought it would be a little bit more dangerous here, you know, like, oh, it's, you know, I was, yeah, I, but um, I moved in and realized Bernal is probably the safest place I've ever been and nothing ever yeah. happens here. There is <laughs> anything to be concerned about, anyone feels safe during the night here. So. Uh, but uh, another, another culture shock is that I felt People, especially in service occupations, weren't as nice. Very few people smile, and so I felt like, oh, I'm walking around smiling, uh, and I don't get someone to smile back. <laughs> 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 Which was like, okay. You have to get used to it. That was a that was a bit hard to get used to. It took some time, but yeah, after I, but I, I still felt the whole time like I can't. I I don't want to stop smiling. Like it's not. I don't want to take off it. So do you think it changed you that you started smiling less? Partly, I think. Yeah, I think that part. Like, I, I certainly still miss it. It's, it's better now, and I don't know if it feels better because I'm going. I'm getting used to it partly, but also I think it's changing, especially in Bernal, because mm -hmm. of all the all the expense that comes here. And this big cultural change happening. Yeah. So, do you see any change? Because it's been six years, so it's quite quite some time. Huge change. Yeah. Yeah. I when I moved there, I thought I would be living here two three years. But I'm, I, I know it's been growing on me every day and I feel more and more, I feel more and more good to live here. It is, it's been growing in such a good direction, I feel, in so many ways. 
And I remember when I when I moved there, and I was thinking, like, wow, it's so rare that I hear English on the, on the tram. I never meet an expat, it's only at the special meetings and so. Yeah. But now it's hard to take a tram without hearing English. That's true. And not even so, English, right? Also other languages. Yeah, other languages and so on. I, I will hold something. I, the one thing that Czech is missing is a bit of cultural influence from other places. I think. Right now it's happening. Mm. And did you choose Brno because um, many people choose Prague, right? So was there like any consideration that maybe okay, even though your grandfather used to live nah. here? So it was straight, like yeah. I don't, I don't want to live. I I've been to Prague several times, and it's not a city for me. Oh. Partly, I'm from a city that has sixty thousand inhabitants, so oh. I'm from a small city. So moving up to Brno is still like big step in a big city <laughs> direction. Yeah, it's like almost four hundred thousand. It's a quite change. Yeah, sure. And the uh, Prague now is too too many tourists. Mm. I love that about about Brno. Everyone who's here lives here. It's, it's hard. To, it's hard to get to. Hard enough for. They don't build a new train station or airport. <laughs> it's good that it's hard. Like it <laughs> uh, so let's see. We know now who is blocking the new railway station. Uh, and also see. the D1, the, the, the main. Yeah, right. I hope, can, I hope they can fix that. But as my grandfather said, they were it was in the same condition, looking the same 20 years ago. So <laughs> <laughs> this is always so embarrassing for me. Yeah. But yeah, yeah, that's it. Yeah. And tell me something about Sweden. What do you miss? From there, what I miss from Sweden, yeah, I'm, I miss, uh, I miss Swedish Swedish nature a lot, and mm. to be able like there's nature here, but it's very, it's very different. And one of my biggest hobbies, uh, hobbies before, has been to to fish. Mm -hmm. Like when I go home now, I fish almost every day, and I, it's something I really enjoy doing. But I haven't done here. It's very different. What is different? I mean, you just go. Fish, you just go and fish. No, <laughs> for me. Actually, I haven't met anyone that fish. Really? I don't have any acquaintance, as far as I know, to mm. share. Yeah, so yeah, I'll if think you know about someone some that would invite me, I would be very happy. Okay, right? okay. I think from somewhere far, from my connections, if some of my friends are watching, just tell me we can connect. Yeah, right. <laughs> them to no. you. No, and uh, yeah, nature fishing. I, of course, you miss a lot of food from home. Luckily, as a Swede, I have IKEA, which sells most of the Swedish yeah. stuff in every Swedish. But food is it corner. really like real? Yeah, yeah. I mean, most most items they have there is the most common Swedish. That's so cool. So, that's so you just go to IKEA and you feel at home. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> it's so easy for Swedish people who live in the big cities where IKEA is. <laughs> Yeah, you can always feel at home. Right? They have all their books are in Swedish and everything. <laughs> yeah, that's true. The names um, they still keep keep the names of the products, so it's yeah, really yeah. cool. I'm a big fan of them. <laughs> <laughs> all right. And so tell me, uh, what were you doing when you came here? What did you start uh, being an entrepreneur immediately? Or because the year before you lived uh, also in Australia or some some mm, time before, yeah. there you were doing business. Mm. And then when you came here, did you continue with the same business or did you found something? You immediately? Uh, no, not the same business necessarily, but I've always been very. Oh, in Australia, there was more a year off. I didn't do so much, so much business there. I was working in a local local food store. They sold, they sold ecological fruit, and that was a very nice experience. But before, I always had a passion for for branding and marketing and such, mm -hmm. and, and uh, sourcing, finding better possibilities, and so. So I I continued doing that when I moved here. I had been helping some friends with this. And went, mm -hmm. went very well. I was helping my grandfather's company with certain things. Like with marketing strategy and, and stuff like mm. that. Yeah. Oh, okay. And when did the idea to found Good Glass came? Well, it's one thing to do it for someone else, but I always wanted to do do my own thing. Like I guess that it's like looking back, it wasn't always as obvious, but I've always it's always been it's always been like my 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 road to become an entrepreneur and it's like uh -huh. I want to be independent. I don't like afford it so much. School wasn't for me and teachers tell me what to do. So you're the rebel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So, I think so big time. <laughs> yeah, if they only knew, right? No. Um, what was the question? How did it happen that you found it good last when it was Oh yeah. So I wanted to do my own thing. And it's always been 
I want to do something that can make that can have a positive impact and do something good, mm -hmm. and that where I can put my main focus on the things that I that I en enjoy doing the most, as well as an easy way to learn the parts that I haven't done before and I haven't put so much attention on board. And it's given me so much, so much of all that, for sure. Being an entrepreneur teaches you a lot, right? From all yeah, you, well, fields. you get to feel a lot of shoes. Everything, you have to yeah. do everything yourself. And like, I've fucked up a lot. I mean, it's, <laughs> and you've learned. <laughs> and you've learned a lot, so much. So uh, I love the lessons of it. Life is, life is one big lesson. And, mm. Is there any particular fuck up that you could share? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Well, you should ask me this that in advance. I'm thinking yeah, about it. No, I, didn't I, ask, I didn't ask him to <laughs> get ready for this question. Oh, yeah. But maybe some, you know, shareable one. But no, so, yeah, I'm thinking like funny, not the most uh, depressing. I <laughs> <laughs> Just tell us. It's the most embarrassing, maybe. Uh, <laughs> no, I don't know. No, I don't know. You know that there is a night that is called Fuck Up Night? Yeah, I've seen that. Uh, I've been there. And the people they just talk about their fuck ups of in the business or anything like that. That's they great. Do. I mean, we should, and it was great. Absolutely, I, it's the one thing when you meet other entrepreneurs that you talk about, like because that's what you learn from. Yeah, it's, it's fine when everything goes well and everyone can do do good, but when it doesn't go so well, that's when you actually <laughs> exactly exactly. Yeah. So, what was the reason to found uh, Good Blast, or how did the idea kept come? Yeah, it was. I'm sorry, short, but I was looking around a lot. I, was, I had it in the back of my head that I really wanted to do something. And it kind of came that I, I, I'll say, I really, I, I saw a type, a, a type of this bottle, mm -hmm. a of this bottle, which I really, really liked. And I just felt that oh, maybe that's it. So I started to, test different ideas and versions of my friends and asking mm -hmm. family and so what everyone thought and what what would be, what would be better and we, we did, did a lot of testing like yeah what, what we can improve and uh, learning about marketing mm -hmm. um, that's and it, it grew in, it grew into good mess. like we didn't of course we didn't really know in the in the beginning and I was thinking of which how to how to do but as i said my my focus i wanted to do marketing i wanted to do the, the, the social media and try and see and it's yeah well so it's good was it somehow connected to your because you're a surfer or you used to be when you were in australia like in australia yeah, you used to fine. surf and these people are usually very like ecologic because they see what's happening in the sea and yeah, so it's a very good point. Absolutely, the ecological aspects come from that. I, I've been lucky enough to travel a lot in my life mm -hmm. when I was when I was a kid and so, and I I have observed a lot of how how incredibly wasteful we can be and how much we we don't care. Like in my growing up in Sweden, especially, you know, it's it's mm -hmm. so it's so clean and everything everything works and so, and we throw our trash and it, mm -hmm. that's everyone and it disappears. Mm -hmm. But to go and see. And I, I love diving and it doesn't matter mm. where you dive in the world, there's plastic trash on the bottom. Mm. And uh, so I, as a, as when I was younger, I was quite pessimistic. And so where, where I thought humanity is going and, and where, where we're heading and that we don't, that people don't take so much responsibility. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so now everybody knows the most famous Swedish girl. Right, yeah? Sure, right. Yeah, no, I, <laughs> so, yeah, well, I, I felt so pessimistic until until I was six, 16, 17 or so. And then I then I just felt that, okay, like either I either I continue being depressed about it mm. or I can at least like feel like I try to do something myself. If, if I'm, when I'm 17 looking back, what, mm -hmm. what, can I, what can I try to do to not have any regrets mm. about it? Yeah, exactly. So we have a good glass here, uh, the good glasses. It, I just love how it looks and it's so great. So maybe if you can explain, uh, if there are still some people who don't know because <laughs> I, from my point of view, everybody knows already. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. So yeah, it's a glass, a glass bottle made of borosilicate glass. It's a double layer to keep it uh, hot or cold. So it, instead of a normal thermos, it has air in between. So it's like an everyday thermos. It keeps it hot or cold for like up to two hours. So you, 
you can feel tea or coffee tea or coffee or any herbs or so that you want on your way to work or in the office and it gets it comes down to a drinkable temperature very quick this is the thing and then it keeps it there for a very long time so instead of you having your cup on in the office and all your tea or coffee gets cold immediately if you have a good glass you it will stay at a perfect temperature for a long time mm. i think that's and it's very instagram friendly it's very instagram friendly <laughs> if you like that yeah that that was a big plus because i really wanted to learn like it definitely you know. i think that was uh, your major win because uh, it's such an insta friendly way how yeah. it is and the people started taking pictures right and sharing it and somebody saw it i always when i give this as a present to somebody they were so happy about it you know, they were looking at it and if they broke it they bought a new one <laughs> so they, they are really happy about it yeah and this is wooden and this is made so the lid is made of bamboo uh, bamboo yeah and then inside it has a, a filter uh, it's, it comes with a double filter for fine tea but this filter makes it uh, so that any tea leaves you have in the bottle stays in the bottle but it also gives you the perfect sip even when you drink water instead of having the this big opening you get like you would have a, just a small sip so this Coffee is your cup. way how to try to make less plastic bottles yeah so just carry this around exactly our goal our goal with the good glass have been to help help people and promote that we use less single-use plastic Uh -huh. I think that's the that's the easiest thing to quit with, and it's the most. It, it's we, we all like we all do it without thinking about it so much, and I haven't put much thought into it, in, into it. And then now with good glass, trying to get people to stop using buying plastic water bottles, and mm -hmm. and our our ambition is much greater. We want to replace most items we can come up with that, that you can easily have with you every day or or so to stop and show that it's possible to do mm -hmm, it. Mm -hmm. So you're doing this or you're on the wave of the zero waste? Yeah, yeah. Waste. Well, when, when we started, everyone told, everyone told, oh, that will never work. Czechs don't care about that. There's no, there's no such trend here. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, there certainly is. <laughs> yeah, certainly is. I would say the so, Czechs are quite, quite in it. So I think we certainly have a very good timing. That yeah, helped a lot. definitely. I think Czechs now are, nowadays are really trying yeah. to look for vegan stuff and real like alternatives. So it's yeah, it's it's really fascinating to watch watch it happen. Um, like like I said, when I started it, it was really no one thought that anyone cared about it here. Mm. And I remember you it ran out of stock, stock immediately. No, well, it was <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was everyone's opinion and. And now it's a huge thing, and like it's everyone now. It's obvious for everyone, you know. Now it feels like it's always been there, but yeah, exactly. So I'm very glad. Now it's it's our goal to to push that more, just to get people more conscious about it. Like we, I'm I'm very happy to that it's such a that's such a nice and Instagram friendly design, as you say, because we want to we want to market it more towards people who is not in so into this whole. The zero waste movement mm -hmm. right now but reach other people and like yeah, maybe get them to think about it or just mm -hmm. if i can influence if we can influence three four people in total that would make them day and one of them influence someone else that would make me so happy mm -hmm. yeah <clears throat> i can imagine and tell me uh i know that this was one of the first actually the first product is the glass the good glass yeah. then you started to have a good wood uh, which is lighter Yeah, yeah, right, and it's more like the, for warm things, so, but it's also for cold ones. Yeah, it's more like a normal thermos with vacuum in between in a very oh. beautiful bamboo body. Uh, but it has the same filter as well, so it's more you can drink. Yeah. Okay. And what are your plans for for future? So yeah, we <clears throat> we want to introduce more more products in this in this field. As I said, right now we've been targeting bottles and stuff, uh -huh. <laughs> um, and. Uh, We want to do bamboo cutlery, bamboo straws. Oh, oh yeah, actually, we we released our first hundred product today. What is it? It's so recent that I forgot about it. I just did it. It's uh, it's what what's in this bottle actually. Ah, yeah, charcoal. Yeah, it's uh, it's made in Japan from a special oak tree there. Uh -huh. They take uh, living branches to keep the tree alive without without hurting it. Mm -hmm. So they 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 trim it, and it's it's a several centuries old. Uh, tradition and use it for water purifying 
But it's so already it's, like this? Yeah, it's active charcoal. So okay. it's normal active charcoal. You would press water through it and it cleans it from diseases and everything. Mm -hmm. well, this is more for every day and for for already drinkable water. You have this in your bottle and it's actually a bit like a sponge. So it has a very, very, very large surface area. So when the water moves around it, it catches things like chlorine, iron, and wow. things you don't want in your tap. So you usually put it like this and you just have it all day yeah. in it and you just pour yeah. new water from the tap. It's, uh, yeah, yeah. Exactly. If some foreigners had some question if the tap water in the Czech Republic is drinkable, <laughs> it is. If you're hesitant, just use good filter. No, yeah, use filters. Water. I mean, we also use filters because the taste is not very, very nice. No, exactly. Yeah. I, I don't. Yeah. That's, if that, you don't have your own at home when you live somewhere out of Brno or exactly. the city. No, that that was the thing. We don't like our own tap water. So when we were looking for a for a good ecological solution, and um, and we were we were researching what it might be, and then we found this, and like okay, that's actually something that's it's a very very nice idea. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I, I hope that people like it. If you try it, please let us know what you think. I, yeah, so let them know the feedback. Good. And I know about also some future plans because now it's the good glass and good wood. But you're thinking of something more, right? Like I mean, new new products as well. Yeah. But maybe yeah, tell it. <laughs> well, yeah, well, yeah. I see what you mean. Now that we want to rebrand. Yeah, yeah, I want yes. to rebrand. <clears throat> Just a little bit because good glasses are quite like. It's really hard to come up with a name for a company, especially. So we know we will, what we want to call the product, and in the in the in the bottle and in the beginning, we uh, we didn't know so much where it was leading. I mean, we thought it wouldn't go go so well, and so so anyway, we we tried different with hundreds of names, and we couldn't come up with anything. But now now we found a very good one, which yeah, we're planning but to change. But it's not for publishing it. It's not for no. I'm not, I'm gonna keep the secret a little bit longer. I can, I can keep it <laughs> but we'll get to know it, I guess, from your social media. Yeah, yeah, just follow us on social media. Mygoodglass.cz or Mygoodglass official on uh, yeah, My Good Glass official for English. So yeah, we, we have a very good name for a, that is more in line with our long-term ambition. Mm -hmm. Was there anything because I think we talked about it uh, before uh, when you launched this? Uh, was there any problem for you with the production that you ran out of stock and did you learn something in there as well? That is a fuck up. Okay, yes, that is a big fuck up. And I, it happens. We got times. there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> no, it's true. Well, it's just bad, bad planning. It's, it's happened I think, three, four times. So it's just. But did, did the people wanted more than you? Yeah, wanted? unexpected. Uh, for, for last. Last Chris, last Christmas, uh -huh. I thought we were very optimistic, <laughs> and uh, I think a bit mid November we had ran out. Really, mid November. Yeah, Jesus, I thought we were super optimistic. That was funny. <laughs> so, um, but it's also like we haven't taken any more investments. We we started buying fifty bottles, and we've been growing from there, just trying to reinvest everything and putting money where it's needed. And so we've we've ordered as much as we have yeah. been able to. So which so to my defense at least <laughs> no. But with the producer, is everything okay? Because this is also usually a big lesson for people who start production, and it's your own product, so yeah. you have some production somewhere. But is it okay? Sure. I mean, it's same thing there. I mean, it's a lot of lot of good lessons that I've learned. Yeah. Oops. Okay. Good. So so a good lesson. <laughs> And tell me, like maybe you already said it, but uh, do you live also the zero waste life, like, or what else are you doing for for the planet? I'm doing my best to practice what I preach, which is really hard in today's world. Like, I, but at least there, there's a big thing. Like, at least I feel a lot more, a lot. I feel more guilt whenever I I notice that I do something. Which is an you know, a bad feeling, but in this uh, it's good for you to get you to think about it because mm -hmm. it's not a necessity. But sometimes, like yeah, we we sell bamboo straws and have them with me, and you order lemonade at some some cafe or something, and they give you a straw. I'm like, oh, I should have said something, and you can't like, throw it away and replace it. You know, it's <laughs> you can, but it doesn't yeah, help. Yeah, it doesn't help. <laughs> uh, and I'm so I'm so glad that it helps so much. That, uh, my girlfriend is very, she's very. Into the into this, so uh -huh. yeah, she helps us at home a lot. 
Yeah, well, we'll talk about it. Help me a lot. How hard it is, which is what we want to, our ambition is to, to help with. Mm -hmm. So that it's not that hard. So that it becomes easier for people, yeah. like. Uh -huh. And more accessible or somehow. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's really good. Uh, there is and a one book companies, for this. Yeah, and when you change, when you start to change people's, how people think of, think about this and how and how they act and so we which is we what we want to promote just have it, have it in the back of your head it creates an urge urge for companies to change as well according to market which yeah, we yeah. are starting to see now like a lot of supermarkets start giving out plastics plastic bags and uh, it's a lot a lot of cafes have given now out uh, bamboo straws mm -hmm. and it's you can see the difference and it's because that people Care. People care more, yeah. so companies start to know that people care more, and I, I notice it all around the world as well. Like it's the, it's the same thing. So mm -hmm. it's it's a very good trend. <clears throat> a lot of people, I'm sure, hear hear this and think that it doesn't matter what we do here, and it's the general perception because of what happens in other countries. Mm. But the truth is that these trends start here, like. A, a lot of lot of different countries, especially Asian countries, so look up a lot to what we do here in Europe. We are huge role models for for general population in a lot in a lot of senses. And trends that come here that that start here can easily spread. And that is, I think, especially it's... nowadays with the social media, it spreads exactly quite a lot. Yeah. So what is what is cool in hip here? If we can make it cool in here, it becomes it becomes <laughs> that, and then it actually can make a difference. Yeah, that's true. So then. And well, tell me, what's your experience of doing business in the Czech Republic? How is it for you as a foreigner and... <laughs> Dance on roses. <laughs> Dance on roses. That's a nice diplomatic answer. I ask you not to give any diplomatic answers, <laughs> but to tell the truth. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, okay. But so... can you compare to Sweden because you left when you yeah. were young? I don't know. Did you do business there? I've been I've been doing business with the four companies all, all around all around the world, and I, whenever whenever I get this question, I tell them like, yeah, I have my, like, the 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 best the best company I've done business with is in Czech Republic, and the absolute worst. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so th there are a lot of comp there are a lot of companies here who actually like yeah are very good and friendly and service friendly and so and we have some amazing partners in Google Ads. Uh, especially younger companies, but also also a few older that are really, really enjoy working with. <clears throat> but it's also it's also a lot of companies you contact here. It's an approach to uh, approach to serviceness that I, it's very hard to understand. Mm -hmm. That it's it can be really hard to purchase anything, even if you if you want to purchase something for several tens of thousands of crowns. And the person is really unwilling to help you or sell, or sell it to you. This is so sad. It's it's weird. I, I don't really understand. Yeah. No. yeah. So. And in the sense of speaking English and managing the business, because your this kind of business partner is your girlfriend who is Czech. Yeah. So she like, helps a she lot, helps I guess. A lot. Helps a lot. But I, when it comes to company contacts, uh, a lot of that I have to do. Luckily, it's fine. When I moved here, <clears throat> Google Translator didn't work at all in Czech. <laughs> Like it was completely incomprehensible what to translate it to, uh -huh. and a website and so on. And now I use Google Translate for like everyday yeah. working stuff and sending emails and so. On. Nice. And I mean, it's obvious that it's a translation, but it, the point gets through and it's. it's wow. Wow. So that's cool. that's a a lot. That's a big difference. And I noticed. And do you notice that you learn with it because of you translate, it? or is it like the? You no, know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying, like, yeah, maybe not, I don't learn so much from that, but uh, I'm trying to learn from that. My biggest source of learning is my girlfriend who pushes Who me. speaks English. Yeah, which, yeah, <laughs> I mean, she speaks English. Very fine, but she's also very set on teaching me Czech, which I'm very uh, thankful very, for. Very nice. I'm, very... Uh, I'm not the best student, but she's very consistent. So. Yeah. We got to your gir Czech girlfriend. Uh, how long have you been together? Two years. Two years? Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you see any difference between the Czech women and Swedish women? Mm -hmm. no, I, and I, now you can be different. Yeah, right. It certainly <laughs> can't. <laughs> I can't. Yeah, I can't. Uh, she's not the typical Czech woman, I think. So I can't really. It would be unfair to categorize, uh, co comparing her at least. 
like in in general i i was yeah, thinking about this question the main difference that i think is that czech women are a lot more proud of their femininity really i'm glad this goes out probably to a czech audience because i i think i'll get more hate from swedish so no but czech women are a lot more proud about their femininity or okay. are proud to be proud to be feminine or proud to be women and like czech women are very strong women women and in czech uh, in sweden a lot of society aims at minimizing the difference between the genders as much as possible, which for some things is, is very nice and everyone should have an equal opportunity, but for when it comes to things like that, it's not. Like I, hmm. That's interesting. Yeah, the truth is that uh, I think you have equality quite in uh, the paycheck and this stuff now in Sweden, that they are very careful about this, that the women are paid the same yeah, it's the, super sensitive. Yeah, very, very sensitive. It's a big, big topic, which is uh, absolutely fair. But, uh, but yeah, it's that's. I mean, it's interesting for me. It's quite a surprise because I would consider Czech women like quite, yeah, as you said, strong. But the strength also brings being a little bit masculine in many things because of the strength. <laughs> Yeah, so nah, really nice. I wouldn't say either that like Swedish women or or mas masculine. That sounds weird. I mean, the yeah, Swedish yeah, women yeah. are very feminine as well. But yeah. yeah, women are more proud of being women here in Sweden. Is like you're not supposed to be proud to be a man or, or proud to be a woman. Mm -hmm. you're, mm -hmm. you're supposed to be the same thing. <laughs> 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 Which yeah, it's not. Yeah, yeah, I understand. And what do you think in general about chicks? Chicks, yeah, <laughs> very. <laughs> Very crafty people, loves nature, and take long, take go, go on a hike and take mushrooms. <laughs> yeah, do you do that as well? Huh? Do you do now, that? Now I do. Yeah. It's kind of our fishing, you know. Yeah, absolutely. You have fishing, we have <laughs> picking that mushrooms. That is so true. I no, I, <laughs> I I really like the mushroom picking here. It's it's grown on me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The hiking, not so much. Like Czechs really love to love to hike, mm -hmm. and like yeah, let's let's. Uh, Let's go out today and walk from point A to point B, and it's fifteen kilometers. Huh? <laughs> and what's the goal of this? They're like, yeah, I'm just gonna walk and see nature. I'm like, okay, well, I'm well, I'm just as much out in nature back home, but it feels like but with a purpose. Like doing like fishing <laughs> what is or the difference? Oh, okay. fishing, or you know, you go up on this mountain to do something. Or... <laughs> <laughs> so I'm trying to get used to the, to the hiking. Because yeah, Teresa really likes it. So. Yeah, yeah, she she looks like an outdoor girl. <laughs> yeah, yeah she's a big time out. Yeah, well, it's so funny always to hear it from foreigners. <laughs> but the truth is that one of the best uh, apps that we have, uh, it's called Mapy.cz, M-A-P-Y.cz. Yeah. And if you're going somewhere in the Czech Republic, but it also works in Austria, and you say, okay, I want to have a hike for one hour, mm. you just set it there as a filter. And you click and it shows you like routes yeah, that yeah. you can take so it's not you cannot do this on google you can do this only on this one because czechs are obviously really crazy about hiking big <laughs> recommendation if you want to go out in nature in czech for sure mapi.cz that's yeah it. you use it I, I i read somewhere that it's the only company it's the only local company that managed to compete with google maps so much exactly. that it's actually very still super popular in google maps yeah. it's not yeah, because Most, Google Maps don't have this, so... No, no, the, the, the trails in Czech, like, speaking about Czechs, the, what's, what's done with the nature here, where the, how, how well marked the, trail, the trails are, and that, that there's everywhere, because it is so popular, it's certainly used the most, most out of the little land that is here. Yeah, that's true, we should protect it more. Yeah, yeah. Funny, yeah, funny side, funny side notes, speaking of where I'm checking, where I'm from. <laughs> my so my, my city is sixty thousand inhabitants. My and my home region is the same size as Czech Republic, with one hundred twenty thousand inhabitants. Really? Wow! Well, you go for a hike and you don't meet anyone. No, no, no. no. Yeah, right. yeah. We were talking about it when we were home and Teresa wanted to go out and walk. Like, oh, let's walk here. Like, yeah, you can walk. You know, probably one hundred kilometers in that direction before you reach anything. <laughs> wow! Well, yeah, for us, it's quite. Crazy because we don't have such a yeah. place. Well, Village okay. though. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about Bruno a little bit more. I really love this question. I think I always ask it. Uh, if you moved out of Bruno, what would you miss? 
Oh yeah. Uh. Cheap alcohol. Cheap alcohol. <laughs> yeah, I think in Sweden no, it's very like, expensive, right? <laughs> yeah, moving up to moving up to Norway, like moving back to Sweden. Oh yeah, the alcohol culture big time. So it's complete polar opposite in Sweden. But but in general, uh, that it's you don't need to earn so much money to have a very nice quality of life here. Mm -hmm. I think it's it's affordable to go out and to go out and eat and uh, to um, oh, to yeah and to, to drink especially. I, to have a party. <laughs> to have a party you now and that you oh yeah I'll certainly miss that depending on where I move to. But just to be able to go out and have a beer with friends any day of the week and it's not. It's yeah. not a thing, and you go out and meet. Yeah, and you meet and... always somebody you know, right? When you walk through. through oh, yeah, that, that I would miss it for Bernal. Bernal, what they say that Bernal is Czech Republic's uh, biggest village is so true. <laughs> what, they, what they mean by that is that Bernal has a very small city center. So while the city is 400,000 inhabitants, if you go to the city center, you're very likely to meet someone you know. So it feels like a much smaller city than it is. Which is very nice. I really like. That. I like this spot. Yeah. yeah. And talking about friends, you mentioned them. How did you find the friends when you arrived? You, I guess you didn't know anybody, no? No. When you arrived? No. Ah, oh, I went to, I went to English meetings. Oh, good. Meet different different meetups, and back then it was especially like the English meeting. I don't know if it's mm -hmm. still active. Uh, a lot of the people I met in the first few weeks there has been some of my closest friends. Nice. So it was an important Quite, period. Yeah, for sure. I met very nice people very quickly. And, yeah. So great. Okay. And, 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 and do you have more Czech or international friends? First three, four years, definitely more international friends. Uh -huh. Last years, now it's definitely more Czech. Really? You it changed so much? Yeah. How sure. Because of your girlfriend or because you started maybe to learn nah, more Czech? Or? My ex is Czech as well. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know because I because I got more used to the culture. I think, uh -huh. I, uh, of course, six years has changed me a lot, and mm -hmm. I, I the things that I, the culture shocks or so that I that I felt in the beginning things, yeah, this, I enjoy it. But it's more. I don't know, yeah. what's, what's Did I, you become Czech in some ways? So that you can you know catch yourself and you're like oh my god I was so shocked when I arrived and now I'm like them. <laughs> I know. I don't. I don't know. Not not personally, but I, I'm a citizen of the world. That's how I always consider myself. Like yeah, I'm born in Sweden, but I don't. You know, I'm part of the part of a little bit of part of every, everywhere I've been. But uh, I don't know. No beer ever after every or every day work. I, I refuse to be the concierge. Sitting <laughs> sitting on the you know sofa at home and drinking the bottle of beer. Oh, we, we can like oh go, we go out to have lunch. Me and Teresa and she's like oh let's have a beer for lunch. What? No, I get super tired and I just I'll sleep the rest of the day. But for like I tried that in the beginning. Like I I it's not that I would never be over lunch, but I, I tried in the beginning to. Oh yeah, I'm gonna be more Czech, so beer like productivity. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> okay, and can you tell me some situation when you felt really bad in the Czech Republic or in Brno when you when you came? I don't know. I'm. I don't like. I don't like when I feel people are are rude to me. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's happened for sure met several times that. Especially as I said, especially in service occupation, as people are can be very unfriendly. Mm -hmm. Oh, you mean waitresses and yeah, yeah, yeah. waitresses shop or shop assistants yeah. or so, which I certainly ruined my day several times and just be treated like shit when you just want to buy something from. Yeah. So that was the worst one, yeah. Let's say was nothing, because you look okay. You could be a Czech person with your looks. Yeah, I think I get away with a lot. Like there, there was. There was uh, one one time we passed some Czech guys as as for a lighter, me and a friend, and the, and the Czech guy is like, "Oh, go home, foreigners." <laughs> that, that was interesting. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Village people, no, no. But... Village people. <laughs> oh, that happens. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh... So no, no bad, bad. No, no, no bad, bad. I think it's 
Okay. <laughs> and what can you say? I guess you feel at home in Brno, right? Yeah. Yeah. So can you like say what helped you to feel here at home? What helped me to feel at home here in Brno? I mean, having good, pe nice people around is, is so important. And I have very nice community of friends and they're friendly people and I really like I love the size of Brno uh, which has helped a lot that it's easy to get no people as we said it's a small city yeah. center so mm -hmm. it, I don't know I'm not the sure the community you mean like the yeah exactly the community and the expat community is great here very very nice now it's so many foreigners now they're like now there's maybe no expat community it's okay, all over like, huge yeah it's huge yeah. or uh, like, so many, but we were a very tight group in the beginning. You felt like you almost knew everyone except for people working for IBM. I said, but <laughs> I didn't accept them. Or what? <laughs> no, there's so many. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> it's, it's yeah, so it's true that they don't even know each other in the company because they are they are so. The many. one question, like now it's less, but in the beginning it was like, oh, so you work for IBM? If you're a foreigner, that's everyone's first question. <laughs> 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 no, actually not. Like, wow, really. <laughs> There are other companies that have foreigners in yeah. Brno. Yeah. yeah, that's true. Okay, and uh, what are your future plans? Do you want to stay here or move back to Sweden? Yes, uh, before, uh, Brno goes on me for everything. And if it continues to go in the direction it's going, like I, was, I would consider it. But I take one day at a time. I don't plan too much. Mm -hmm. I'm still very much missing. I would like to have more. Fishing. More sun? No, more sun beach and sea. You know, ah, okay. Fishing I'm finally out, but I need the sun. Like, you know, yeah. Sun. Let's see. Yeah, Australia would be nice. If it wouldn't be so far from everything, I would move there immediately. Mm -hmm. Okay, I haven't been there, but I can imagine. I'm that. Thinking like in Europe, where it could be, but it's a bit hard. I love Portugal, but uh, people are a little bit too maniana, maniana. <laughs> too what? Maniana. Maniana. Oh, but I felt the Portuguese were kind of uh, more more um, organized than also in my experience a lot more organized than, than southern other southern countries yeah. for sure definitely that's why portugal yeah but <laughs> it has to be very I, hard for I'm a swedish a, person i'm a very i have a very good friend who's a businessman in portugal i'm sure he's never been in time to a meeting in his life <laughs> 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 no it's just yeah i know it's the stereotypes that kind of work in the, in the practice we have some questions or something awesome. no so guys if you have some questions just ask us I just like to say that I'm from Portugal. Oh, really? Yeah. So, I love like Portugal. Okay, Portugal is my favorite country <laughs> in Europe for sure. And I'm already. In, I I try to be on time for meetings. <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. I'm she not... was on time today. It's our new intern, Maria. <laughs> it's good. I I'm not always on time myself. Like, it's, it's it's a joke. He jokes yeah. about. It's always the stereotypes that we all have, right? Yeah, about yeah. Chicks and southern, southern people. No, they're the best. There's always something in them. Yeah, yeah. Green and true. Yeah. And when we get back to your childhood, uh, who did you, you want to become? What was your dream? What was my dream? Yeah. I want. I always wanted to do my own thing, and I wanted to. I. I remember since I was a kid, like. I felt that all school did was try, try to push me through one of the square holes, but I, I was a circle, you know, and they're like, oh, go and get in there, get in there. I'm like, I felt like I went through school, like, I'm glad I survived. Kind of. um, did you have all A's? Yeah, all A's, definitely. You know, <laughs> I had a very, very nice teacher who saved me from completely failing at school. Yeah? yeah. No. <laughs> I, I love to learn, like learning is my, learning is one of my absolute big passions, but I do it on my own. I want to learn about the things that I, that I like and I have my, my way of doing it that I've developed myself and I, but uh, yeah, so, so yeah, growing up, so I, I was on the, on the track of, um, I wanted to do my own thing. I wanted, I wanted, so there to, was do, I wanted to do some difference. And as I said, when I was 15, 16, 17, I had this realization that I really wanted to try to do something myself that I would be proud of when I get older. Uh -huh. That's always been very important for me. So you always follow the entrepreneurial. Yeah, yes, yeah, so as I said, there. now looking back, yes. Yeah, it's really <laughs> nice to look back. Then I was like, oh, I hope so, but I probably, I can't even, I shouldn't think about it so much. You know? uh -huh. It probably won't happen. But it did. 
<laughs> so far, so yeah. Yeah, nice. All right, I have the last question. Um, is there something you would recommend to the people who are coming to the Czech Republic, to the newcomers, uh, for their better life, to feel more at home? Oh, well, if you have a culture shock about anything, get get over it. Czech Republic has a lot of very, very nice sites that you can definitely enjoy and see. If you Once once you get over the first, the first hurdle, I mean, it depends on where you come from. Some people consider Czechs to be have a super good service and be a very clean country and no so but yeah get out and meet people there are many expat events there are many events happening every weekend it's a very nice very good ways to to get uh, to meet new friends it's it's very nice it's very nice to be a foreigner i think because you have something in common with all other foreigners mm -hmm. um yeah that's it all right so thank you guys for watching us today on tuesday thank you very much johan for coming thank you for reminding me it's been I have learned, it's been interesting yeah i've learned a lot uh, because we meet sometimes at some events but you never talk for you know like one hour <laughs> no for sure i hope i said some some okay things and not just crap no, it's a really nice thing. So, <laughs> guys, uh, we have a question. Yes. Uh, right. Uh, there's this person asking if uh, do you plan to live permanently in the Czech Republic? If you live, if you plan to live permanently in the Czech Republic. Yeah. So, uh, so that I I take I live one day at a time. I have no idea if if, if Czech continues to grow in the direction it's it's going now in Berlin, especially in Berno, yeah, I can potentially possibly see, see me living here and raising my kids here and so. Uh, are you planning kids? Planning kids. Uh, <laughs> most people are planning kids sooner or <laughs> later. Now. If no, nothing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Good. We'll see what happens. Uh, but yeah, now one day at a time. I, uh, yeah. There's no, no need to plan that much. I'm not buying a house anymore. Okay, not settling completely with the house yet. All right, we'll that's it. Yeah. Okay, guys. So thank you very much again. I hope thank you will you. have a nice Tuesday. Thank you, Johan. And we'll see you next time, next month, or during our webinar, and also some news. Uh, we just launched a conference at yourself better world CZ. We've launched uh, tickets, so if you want to join us for another expat-friendly event, because all the conference will be in English, it's about uh, getting some new inspiration to your life. There will be very interesting speakers. We'll be very happy if you come to Brno and enjoy it with us on 30th of November. It's also kind of celebration of 10 years helping expats in the Czech Republic for our company. So I'll be happy to see you there. And yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. And yeah, if someone wants to, a good Christmas presents or want to check it out, it's yeah. mygoodglass.com for checks mygoodglass slash CZ. Yeah, we'll also post it to the comments to this video. So I wish you very good luck because the product is so great. It's such a great present. <laughs> also make a present for yourself for sure. <laughs> and only other people. And take care. Yeah. Bye. Ciao.